Yankity yeah, the daddies are back! Hello everybody, welcome to the galaxy, I am Fallen Star. Welcome back to Dream Daddy! Yes! <laughs> I've been away from the computer for a long time, so I haven't been able to play this game, but I decided now that I'm going to be trying to do uh, longer episodes so we can get through the story faster because uh, I'm up to where people have been like weeks ago, so we're, we just got onto a uh, dad book. We've got dads! So, I'm gonna go with my philosophy and we're just gonna go in order. Just so that way it's not, uh, so it's not swayed toward any particular dad. <coughs> Robert. <laughs> anyways, we're gonna start with Craig. Craig's a good one to start with anyways because he's our bestest friend. So let's do this. Dad of three, business and entrepreneur, and fitness enthusiast. Juggling work, family, and fitness is a tough gig, but sometimes but someone's gotta do it. I can't read words. <laughs> On a Friday at night, you are most likely to get one last good cardio session in, obviously. If you had one thing to take with you on a desert island, what would it be? A box of energy bars. I didn't even get these freaking answers, uh, choices. But okay. Uh, what are your turn-ons? A sub-six-minute mile. My God, that turns you on? That's just, I can't do that. <laughs> what did you want to be when you grew up? Beer Pong World Champion. Hell yeah! Keg Stan Craig! <laughs> What's your favorite movie genre? Buddy Cop Movies Forever. Freaking awesome. <laughs> What's your ideal date? Scaling a huge dangerous mountain for fun. My God. <laughs> what do you never leave home without? An extra tube of energy gel. Energy gel? That sounds really weird. <laughs> I spent a lot of time thinking about my mild time used to be so good. What happened? Have I peaked? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So that's Craig. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people like Craig. A lot of I've seen a lot of other people talk about it when they play the game that Craig is their favorite. He is my favorite, and he's a really cool dude, and he is my best friend. But that's the thing. He's my best friend. I don't know if I really want to get into that, because what happens if things don't work out? Will we be still be friends? I don't know. I'm thinking way too far into this. Anyways, Matt, what up, my boy? My honey daddy boy. boy. But what? <laughs> Alright, Max, so uh, avid music enthusiast, passionate coffee drinker. You can find me most days selling bean juice over at the coffee spoon or hanging out at the park with my amazing daughter. Hit me up about 80s no wave music. Alright. On a Friday night, he is most likely to perfect my cold brew setup one drip at a time, baby. There he goes with the baby again. Baby! If you had one thing to take with you on the Desert Island, you say fine tunes to pass the days with, what are you going to listen to them with? You can only take one thing. So either you take the iPod, the headphones, or... Yeah, you can't do either of them. <laughs> what are your turn-ons? Multi-instrumentalism. That's not me. <laughs> What did you want to be when you grew up? A barista, weirdly enough. Well, look at that, now you are. Good job. What's your favorite movie genre? Shit with subtitles. You're dead to me. I'm just kidding. I don't like subtitles. I, I hate, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not against subtitles. It's just that whenever I see something with subtitles, I get distracted by the subtitles and I can't actually watch what's going on. <sighs> Sadness. What's your ideal day? We go to the animal shelter seriously uh, and seriously consider adopting a cat. Hmm. I'm not all that big of a cat person. But I like the idea by going to an animal shelter because that sounds fun. What do you never leave home without? My headphones, both in, in ear and over ear, just in case. I spent a lot of time thinking about where did writing commas into song titles come from and where did it go? Do we all just agree that it's a bad idea? Yes, because if there's a comment, it's way too long of a title. Okay, next dad, Brian! My ginger boy! Hey, I'm Brian. I spend most of my days hanging out with my awesome daughter and thinking of new ways to grow things. If you like fishing, then we'll get along. Oh, he's a fisher. Fisherman Brian. Love it. On a Friday night, you are mostly to see just how slowly I can cook a piece of brisket. Mmm, tasty. 
If you have one thing to take on a desert island, what would it be? My fishing pole. That actually makes sense because you could eat the fish then, and that would help a lot. Yes. What are your turn ons? A keen understanding of steak cuts. Mmm. What? Well, do you like. What do you like? You like the New York strip? You like the T bone? You like. The. 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 the yeah. <laughs> what did you want to be when you grew up? Fireman. Nice. What's your movie genre? Romantic comedies. Nice, nice. What's your ideal date? Deck building? Alright, dude, if we're building a deck together for a date, there's something wrong. Unless you mean a dick building! <laughs> ah! Shut the fuck up, star. Why do you never leave home without? My portable fishing pole. That's a little weird, but I'll live with it. I spend a lot of time thinking about how my daughter is smarter than I am. <sighs> it never stops with you, with the bragging, does it? It just, it never stops. Alright, Roberto! How's my favorite man? The Danny Sex Bang. Yup. <laughs> when the internet gains senti sentience and decides to destroy us all, you don't know it'll use this information against us, right? Oh, you. You smart little cookie. On a Friday night, most likely to make a deal in an alleyway, have it go badly. Who's the cop? Was it Giacomo? That's not how you say that. I trusted Giacomo. <laughs> if you had one thing to take with you on Edge Island, what would it be? A gun. Well, that's just dumb because you can't bring the bullets with you because that would be more than one thing. And then you can't even use it then. What are you going to do? Whack things with it? I'm looking too much into this. Sorry. What are your turn ons? Don't talk to me. Oh. Sorry. What did you want to be when you grew up? Grifter. Alright. <laughs> What's your favorite movie genre? Itali Italian neo-realism. Oh, Robert. What's your ideal right? What's your ideal date? Grave robbing. Sounds fun. Why do you never leave home without at least four knives? Robert, you're my kind of dude. <laughs> I spend a lot of time thinking about it. you. Ever really look into a rabbit animal's eyes? You're such a mysterious. Strange little cookie, but I love you. Alright, Damien, you vampire looking bitch. <laughs> How do you do? I have finally decided to join this information superhighway. I'm not entirely sure how this works, but I will try my best to understand. I love long strolls through graveyards and spending time with my son. If you would ever like to chat about the latest in Victorian fashion, the inevitable ability of our own demise, or black cats, Please send me a letter. Alright then. <laughs> On a Friday night, he listens to cr to true crime podcasts while I taxidermy my new specimens. That's a little gross, but okay. If you had one thing to take with you on a desert island, what would it be? A coffin. Real optimistic, aren't you, buddy? <laughs> what are your turn ons? Pronouncing bossum correctly. Is it like. Boss and awesome. Bossum! <laughs> I don't think that's how you pronounce it, but okay. <laughs> what did you want to be when you grew up? A bat. Alright. <laughs> What's your favorite movie genre? A foreign art house horror. That sounds actually really cool. It's, uh, what's your ideal day? It's night. We are in an industrial dark wave club in Berlin. The music drums to the beat of our hearts. Okay. <laughs> what do you never leave home without? An upside down cross. That's satanic. And I don't go, I don't, I don't fuck with that. No, no, no. <laughs> I spend a lot of time thinking about mortality salience. You are a creepy person, Damien Bloodmarch. Alright, Hugo. Hugo, my man with the angsty son. Trying to make a rhyme. Doesn't work a ton. Oh! Middle school teacher, high school teacher, writer of scholarly articles on 18th century literature for various esteemed publications. If you're on here to tell me that my son put a cherry bomb in your trash, I know and I'm sorry. Fucking Ernest. This Ernest little bitch. On a Friday night, you are most likely to brew some strong tea and paint my miniatures. 
cracking a cold one with the boys. <laughs> if you had one thing to take with you on a desert island, it'd be a remembrance of things passed by. M Why would you bring a book? That's just dumb. Unless it's a book on survival. Oh boy. <laughs> These people know nothing about survival. What am I gonna do? Anyways. What are you turning on? Muscles! Those big daddy arms! Pa! Pa! Okay. <laughs> what did you want to be when you grew up? Movie star. Well, that didn't work out, now, did it? <laughs> uh, what's your favorite movie genre? Documentaries on heart history. What's your ideal day? Each of us read a different book on opposite sides of the couch in comfortable silence. That sounds actually really nice. Why do you never leave home without? My glasses. Actually, I forgot them a lot. home a lot. You have glasses? Have I seen you with glasses before? I feel bad now. <laughs> I don't remember. Um, you're not wearing glasses in your profile picture though, so shame, shame. I spend a lot of time thinking about I worry that people who are against e-readers are more in love with the idea of books than actually reading them. Hmm. Joseph, my grilly, gr unbelievable buddy, your freaking master. <laughs> okay. Voted Maple Bay's number one youth minister for five years running. Living in my hometown with my beautiful wife and our four amazing kids. If I'm not in church, you can catch me out on the open water, setting sail on the seas of adventure. I love playing guitar and cru cru crushing, crushing, <laughs> and crushing my kids at Candy Land. Nice. <laughs> um. Okay. On Friday night, you lead the community in a fun mixer. Very cool. If you had one thing to take with you, it'd be my sixth string. Alright. What are your turn on? My loving wife. Uh, Mary. <laughs> what did you want to be when you grew up? Ship captain. What's your favorite movie genre? Feel good movies. Like Old Yeller? Batcher. Batcher. What's your ideal day? Lovely, a lovely night on the town with my wife. What are you doing on dad? I'm trying to meet other dads. I'm trying to, you know, mingle. Trying to get a little bit of the action here. And you're going on about your wife. No one wants to hear about her. She's a little whore. <laughs> so mean. <laughs> what do you never leave home without? The good book. The good book? Not just a good book. The good book. Grapes of Wrath. Just kidding, that's a fucking shit book. I spent a lot of time thinking about how I can be a better man, husband, and father. Okay. Okie doke. What are we gonna do? Okay, I'm gonna close my eyes. And we're going to just do this. And we're gonna pick one real quick. Alright, ready? Here we go. Ah, ah frick. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna message Damien. Damien seemed really interesting. A little odd, but interesting. I think I should hang out with him to get to know him a little better. Oh wait, do I not get to pick other dads too? Frick! I navigate to Damien's dad book page and type out a message. Oh, hey dude! You seem cool! We should hang out sometime! I sit there for a minute before I see Damien typing. <gasps> but then he keeps typing. And typing. Man, is this guy writing a novel? I leave the computer to make some coffee. And he's still typing. I sit my coffee and the computer is finally dings. <gasps> ah! Star. I, I, oh god. Well, there's more. Ugh. There's so much reading. Star. I must confess my excitement to be receiving your letter for... As you see, I do find myself available to enjoy your company. I must ask for your for forgiveness, however, as I believe our first meeting did not paint me at, in as gentlemanly a manner as I would have liked. Oh, God, there's more. Stop! I would be highly flattered to enjoy your companionship at my residence for an afternoon tea and a stroll around my garden. Should it please you, till then, adieu. Yours humbled, D. Bloodmarch. I stare at the screen and reread the letter several more times. Okay. Hey, Amanda! Amanda pops out of her room. Her eyes are a little puffy. Almost as if she'd been crying. What? Amanda? Hey, you alright? I'm fine. Oh. You're not totally cool. Come here, I'm gonna hug you. I just found out that the succulent I've been watering and 
singing to for the last three months was actually made up out of plastic. Oh no! Even the dirt was fake. Oh, honey. Are you sure that's all you're upset about? You have to tell me what's actually wrong. I'm sorry about your plant. Ugh. I don't want to bother her, but... Are you sure that's all you're upset about? If there's, you know, anything going on, I just want you to know that I'm here for you. And I'll always be here for you. Whether you need a shoulder to cry on or a strong dad to go kick someone's butt, I'm only a phone call away. I'm only one call away. Thanks, Dad. I appreciate that. But I'm fine. Really. I'm un convinced, but I'll stop badgering her about it. I'm sure she'll tell me when she's ready. Can you help me with something? Ugh. Dad, for the last time, I'm not popping your back pimples. Please! They're killing me! <laughs> no, no, can you interpret this for me? I turn the computer to Amanda and she squints at Damien's message. I just don't understand NetSpeak. Like, is this how you kids communicate with each other now? Oh, totally. This is the hot new thing. See, Dad? Kids got over saying LOL and LMAO or whatever and decided that they want, needed to bring it back to the 1800s. So what do I do? Where's your pen and quill? What? <laughs> Did you forget to, to unpack the pen and quill? Dad, how will you, we address the <laughs> nobleman in regards to your upcoming deputant? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I know you're messing with me. Father, without a proper chaperone, you'll never end up with a suitor worthy of our land. Our, or our dowry. Or, so you read Pride and Prejudice for school one time, and now you're re reciting things you know about it back to me, aren't you? Like the first five pages, then I read a review of the movie. Still gotta be, though. Great. So what do I say to the damn man? I got this. Amanda reaches over me and types on the keyboard. What's she typing? Sure thing, dude. Regards. Stop. <laughs> Amanda hits set and smiles at me. You're freaking smart, Amanda. Well, I suppose that's that. I may- Oh my god, it's so spooky. I make the short walk over to Damien's house. Well, I guess you can really call it a house. It's more of a manor? Estate? The gothic carpenter looms above the house, the other homes in the cul-de-sac. I walk past a couple of gargoyles guarding the front door and look around for a doorbell. There doesn't seem to be one. I pull the large ornately carved bat's head door knocker and ba back in a hollow sound echoes through the house as I strike it against the door. Oh god, that's scary. Okay. I wait several moments before the door slowly creaks open. Hello? It's a little creepy, but I enter the home and take a few steps into the foyer, not noting the oil portraits of who I assume are dead relatives hanging on the wall. Okay. As I am admiring, the front door slams shut behind me. Ah! <laughs> Hello? Silence. An oil lamp in the corner flickers dimly, casting ominous shadows against the wall. Why do I feel like all the people in these paintings are staring straight at me? Why is it so cold in here? Where's Damien? Ah! <laughs> Star, pleasure to have you in my home. I look up and see Damien standing at the top of the majestic staircase with a walking handle, candle holder. What's, uh, what's with the slamming door shut? Oh, sorry. There was a draft. And the door creaking open when I knocked? I accidentally left the door unlocked. And the creepy oil paintings? I like oil paintings. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, this is awkward. Please, let me show you around. Okay. You creepy bastard. Damien leads me around his house, showcasing his par parlor, sitting room, auxiliary, blah, 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 sitting room, <laughs> and the parlor again for some reason. Oh. This is one of the older homes on the block, yes, but nowhere near as old as the architecture might suggest. Through extensive re renovating, I have been able to craft 
a residence that is both historically accurate to the Victorian period and equipped with the amenities of any modern dwelling. We walk past the door covered in bumper stickers, caution tape, and a black par parade poster. I'm guessing that is Lucine Drew. Did they listen to My Chemical Romance in the Victorian era? <laughs> That's my son, Drew. You know how the rebellious teen years are onward, onward. There, there's more to see. We reach a door at the end of the hall that Damien opens with a flourish. And this is the library. Ooh! Sunlight streams in from floor to ceiling, arched windows, the walls are lined with packed bookshelves, and even more books are scattered over the period appropriate furniture. Damien is clearly really proud of this room. Look at, look at the window, look at the butterflies, pick up a book, that's enough of the tour. Uh, I'm gonna look at the butterflies. This, Damien reminds me of, um, Mortimer or Susie from uh, Mortimer Kitty Cat Gaming. With, uh, you know, the taxidermy and... Ugh, being spooksies. <laughs> oh, look at the butterfly. Oh, God, love hearts. <laughs> I walk up to the glass display of pin bugs on the wall. It's pretty impressive. Nice bugs. Huh. I pin them all myself. Maybe I could show you how, how sometime. I'm concerned I would stick the pin right through my finger. That'd probably happen. Ah, mm. uh, the pinner's gambit. Is that a thing? Uh. No. Okay, then. Uh, I'll pick up a book. <laughs> you know, Star, in the Victoria Victorian era, there was some controversy surrounding reading. Many people thought the more twardy novels would encourage youth into a life of crime and would cause too much of distraction from work and school. I pull out a book at random and examine the worn cover. Opening it, I turn to a random page and read aloud. Huh. Naruto struggled against the chains and says... <laughs> uh, okay, then it's not... <laughs> Demon snaps the book shut and puts it back on the shelf. <laughs> That's a rare book from my private collection. <laughs> Okay, I don't want to look at the window. That's enough. Please, will you join me for tea? Tea! I love tea! I followed Damien to his sitting room where finger foods have already been set out upon a beautiful, tiered, silvery tray. I take a seat on one of the high back chairs as Damien pours and serves me some tea. I can't believe we're having high, a high tea. I never thought I'd get to do this. <laughs> Damien smiles to himself. What? Oh. It's a common misconception that high tea refers to the wealth of, or class of the people enjoying it, when in fact the high refers to both the later time of day that the working class had to enjoy tea and the height of the tables on which they served. <laughs> well, yeah, tea, yes, oh, tea. Mm. My dear friend, we currently enjoy the afternoon tea. That's informative. Damien takes a seat next to me and serves me a tiny sandwich. Your home is really impressive. Are there a lot of goths in Maple Bay? I like your cake. Well, I feel like if I said I like your cake, he's just going to tell me that it's not a cape. It's actually a drobe or some kind of dress wear from the Victorian era that's Edwardian inspired. So I'm just going to say your home's really impressive. Yeah. Oh my god. That was a lot of dicks. It seems like you really put a lot of work into this place. Th thank you. Huh. No one's ever complimented my home before. I thought you said you painted all the walls black. This is red and whatever color. Well, I can barely get matched salt and pepper shakers in my place and look at what you've done. I'm kind of jealous. Uh. That's very generous of you to say. What got you so interested in goth stuff? Uh. Well... When I was a young boy, my father took me into the city to see a marching band. No. Ah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Sorry. Haha, <laughs> did you guys see a marching band? <laughs> ah! 
my person knew exactly where I was going. Damn, we're so much alike. Okay. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't understand. <laughs> You're serious? Of course. But it's, you know, the song. A man made me listen to it. Seriously? I'd love to see a marching band. <laughs> Nevertheless, I've always had a love for art, history, and fashion. What started off as a small hobby of collecting taxidermy animals grew into sort of an obsession. It's a privilege to be able to appreciate the lives and culture of those who came before us, I think. Why not go all the way? Hmm. I like I like not dying when I catch a cold. He takes a sip of tea. I can acknowledge that there were many very terrible things about the Victorian era, and to try and live a life that strictly aligns with those ideals would be admittedly horrid. But I think it takes a critical mind to truly appreciate something to the fullest, to be cogn cognizant of its flaws and love it all the same. Tell me, Star, do you have any hobbies? Oh man, I do, but I don't know if I care about anything the way you care about this stuff. For, uh, for example, I like to wear an eggs on my nipples. I don't think that I love that as much as you do. Well, I'd love to hear about your interests. Hearing someone talk about the things that they're passionate about is intriguing and, quite honestly, rather attractive. Oh, okay. Please, do tell me about your hobbies. Quick. Sounds sophisticated. Oh god! I like watching soap making videos on the internet. I love me some word jumbles. I learned to juggle. I learned how to juggle once. So it was pretty good to say. Yeah! Oh no, I don't think you like that. <laughs> Gravity is an interesting thing, and you know? um, I believe that juggling is the pinnacle of humankind's interaction with the gravitational arts. Hmm. Interesting. I started out with scarves, but now I can comfortably juggle balls. Juggling pins is currently um, out of pr my purview. Damien looks at me quizzically, but shrugs it off. We finish our tea and finger sandwiches. Come, I have one more thing to show you. What is it? Oh my god, it's gorgeous! What? <laughs> Damien takes me around the back of his home where a variety of flowers flourish in beautiful landscape rows. A small stone path weaves through it and butterflies flit lazily through the air. My garden. It's beautiful. Thank you. Victorians took flowers and floral arrangements very seriously. You see, it was considered uncouth. Uncouth? Uncouth? Okay. To discuss personal and romantic relationships in public. So lovers and friends alike would use bouquets to send secret messages to each other. Each flower and plant is a symbolic of different feelings. Huh. Even more interesting is that one flower could mean different things depending on the other plant it was paired with. One had to be extremely careful as even the style in which the ribbon was tied around the bouquet affected the message. Mm. Damien leans down and plucks a gorgeous bright orange flower off a vine. Mm. Lilium bull the the orange lily. <laughs> what do you think of this one means? Uh, my loins are ablaze. The art of the Titus. Three cheers for sweet revenge. My loins are ablaze. There are blazing loins. Yes. I guess that wasn't correct. The orange lily is actually symbolic of pure hatred. Well. And that's pre precisely why floral arrangement is so challenging. What's your favorite type of flower? Uh. Ooh, I like snapdragons. Snapdragons are cool. Because they're cute. And you can do that thing where you squeeze them so it looks like they're talking. Ah! What a lovely choice. I'll have to remember that when I put together a bouquet for you. Oh, he's gonna put a bouquet again for me. How sweet. <laughs> hey. You would put together a bouquet for me? Nobody's ever given me a bouquet before. I follow Damien down the footpath and admire more of his beautiful flowers. Suddenly, a phone rings. Huh. Oh, Star, will you excuse me? 
I must take this. Of course. He pulls his cell phone out of his pocket. I'm a little surprised it's not retired in front of Frick talk. <laughs> Go for it. Uh. Damon smiles and walks back to the house. I take a deep breath and enjoy the heavily perfumed air. What a lovely yard. This makes me wish I had put a little more effort into the garden Amanda and I tried to start one time. Our watermelons grew to the size of cherry tomatoes and then immediately died. Oh, hey, a gargoyle. Oh, no, I knocked the gargoyle. Oh, no! Uh-oh, I didn't do it. Oh, crap, fix that gargoyle. Start! Oh, God. Uh, oh, frick. Okay, this goes... No. Not like... Oh, frickin' hell. Frick. Uh, this... Fuck. I don't know how this goes. Oh, he's gonna be mad at me. Oh, frick my dick. Oh, shut the front door. There's no way to fix this. There's no way to fix the gargoyle. Well, I'm screwed. Out of time. God damn it, I'm such a fucking klutz. Crap, crap, crap! I can't figure this out! Oh, here comes Damien! Oh, he looks upset! Hope he's not My sincerest apologies to have kept you waiting. There's an urgent matter that I must attend to, so... Uh. Star, did you break my gargoyle? I'm sorry! All I did was lean on it! It's just, it's just fun. What? I just had it installed last week! I... No, no matter. I suppose it will give me a chance to work on my... Masonry skills. Masonry skills? Yeah. Now, if you excuse me, I'm afraid I must take my leave. That's no problem, dude. Everything's alright. Damien works the hem of his coat with his fingers and looks away. Everything is perfectly fine, but I, uh. It's a scene. What's wrong? He appears to have. Well, his teacher needs me to come to, to the school. Post haste. Do you need help? Oh no, you don't have to. Let me come with you. Us dads gotta stick together. Mm. You're right. This is one of Luc this is one of Lucine's more elaborate stunts. I would greatly treasure having another par parent by my side. Let's go. I got um. you. I broke your gargoyle. I'll help you out, man. Damien, I and I walk into the school, and I am. And are immediately greeted by an anxious looking Hugo. I don't know. Hey, Damien, you're here in record time. Oh, no. I wouldn't miss it for the world, dear friend. Wow, whatever it is, it doesn't seem like it. This is Hugo and Damien's first time to the My Kids Are in Trouble radio. Hmm. What is this? What is it this mm -hmm. time? This, Damien, you have to see to believe. What did he do? Damien and I fall into step behind Hugo, who leads us through the busy corridors of the school. We pass by several classes in session, and I vaguely wonder if Amanda's around. Hugo eventually ushers us into a small boiler room with a flight of rickety stairs leading down into the darkness. Watch your step. I can hear faint voices drifting up from the basement, and they sound they don't sound happy. As I'm led into the depths of the school, I recall the antics I got into as an AC middle schooler. I at least... I had a, enough sense to stay out of a creepy basement. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, uh, did, did, what are you guys doing? We find another teacher in a boiler room tucked away in the back of the basement. With him are Lucine and Ernest, Hugo's son. Lucine has a bloody nose. Were they fighting? Thanks for coming. I can't make heads or tails of this. I look around the scene of the crime and see a bunch of bricks and some... Ma masonry masonry's tools scattered around. What happened here? Ernest punched me. Ernest! Lucine tried to kill me. Lucine! <laughs> the room falls silent. I was not trying to kill you, dumbass. I was trying to build a brick wall around you and see what would happen. You promised me there was wine down here. You tricked me. Uh. Whoa, 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 wait a second. Lucine, did you try to cask a, of Amentilo, Lotto, Ernest, what? <laughs> I neither confirming nor denying that. I turned to Damien and whispered to him. What's, 
uh, what's Cask of Almonds? It's a classic Edgar Allan Poe short story where a man gets his enemy drunk, lures him down to the cellar and with the promise of wine of a fine vintage, and then buries him alive behind a brick wall. Oh! Okay, that makes sense. It's a lovely story. <laughs> so wait, let's see, you tried to do that to him? I was curious to see how it turned out. I wasn't actually going to leave him there. What was the thought process here? That Ernest was just going to sit still while you slowly built a tomb around him? Well, it worked for like 20 minutes because he's an idiot, but then he realized that I had lied about the wine. And you were cackling maniacally. That sort of tipped me off. Well, Ernest, are you really that dumb to follow this guy into a basement promising wine at a school? Ernest, 20 minutes? Dad. What? It took you 20 minutes, son. Uh, it took you 20 minutes? Son, we just did an entire two weeks until on the cask of... Uh, and it took you 20 minutes to realize Lucine was leading you into the an elaborate ruse? Did you even read the story? I read the first five pages and then read a review of the movie. Does every kid do this? It's only five pages long and there is no movie. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, you're right. I paid Lucine to read it for me. I don't know. Actually, he didn't even pay me, so when you think about it, this was me teaching him a lesson. Davy and Hugo both have their heads in their hands. You guys are always telling me to engage in literature, and I did. I don't see what the problem is. Alright, I'm, I'm filling this under... I'm filing this under a what the hell. Don't you do... Don't do whatever that was again. You two are both suspended for a week. Ernest and Lucine high five. Motherfuckers. <laughs> the teacher starts to stomp up the stairs. Hugo, I'll cover your class. Take your son home. Bloody. Mr. Bloodmark, it's you too. Thank you for your med me mediation. We all head up the stairs and out of the school in intense silence. Lucine, Damien, and I pile into my car and begin to drive home. Lucine in immediately puts his hood up and stares out the window angrily. I'm not going to therapy again. Oh, God. I know, son. It's entirely up to you whether or not you want to go. But I care about you, and I can not and I can see that you're struggling. So if you do decide that you would like to speak to a professional about your feelings, we can do that, too. Huh. Maybe you can spend the, this next week looking for a summer job, hmm? I know how much you want, to, want your own car. I can't believe Damien's keeping his cool. I'm impressed. Fine. Thanks for not freaking out too hard. Oh. I love you, son. The scene continues staring out, th out of the window. Love you, too. We spend the rest of the drive in re relative silence. Oh, They're such a cute little dad and son. Oh. The moment we pull into the driveway, the scene hops out of the car, slams the door, and runs inside. I didn't expect to have that conversation in front of you. He and I have a lot we need to work out. It's alright, and all things considered, this scene's brick laying was pretty good, so there's your silver lining. <laughs> there is that, yes. He's probably just going through a phase. I really admire how you handled that. Does this kind of thing happen a lot? I really admire how you handled that, because, you know, most dads would, like, freak out and be able to, you know, force him to go to therapy. You were a lot more diplomatic with him than I would have been than I would have been. I just want what's best for him, and I don't think yelling at him would do either of us any favors. It really does. You're a good dad. Oh my god, the dicks. <laughs> See you around soon? It would be my honor. Did you guys fucking hear that? It's fucking thunderstorming outside. Not in the game, like in real life. What the fuck? Holy shit, my whole room just shook. It would be my honor and my pleasure. Damien bows with a flourish, classy. Classy. Huh. I come home to find America curled up onto the couch with a blanket watching TV. I flop down next to her. Yo, what you watching? Tiny House Hunting Brothers Extreme Edition? Ugh, I hate this show. 
The couple on screen bickers back and forth while standing in an extremely small house made of recycled bottles. The tiny house hunting brothers watch them with bemused expressions, both of their heads touching the low ceiling. I told you I wanted a two bed, two bath, shabby sh chick cottage. Shabby chic cottage, sorry. <laughs> this house doesn't even have a bathroom. But honey, the house is only 20 yards away. It's not that bad. I am not pooping outside, Greg! <laughs> Why don't they just get a regular sized house? I I don't know. Hot afternoon, Tigo. It got strange. We had to go to the school to pick up the scene since he tried to. He lured Ernest down in the cellar with the promise of fine vintage and then tried to brick him into the wall, right? How did you know? How did you know that? Has everyone read this story except for me? Lucene live streamed the entire thing. <gasps> what? I missed a live stream? Motherfucker didn't even tag me. This entire day is beyond me. But otherwise, it was a fun day. That Damien guy, guy's a character, but he's really good co company and I, and surprisingly a dim diplomatic dad. I dig his style. You know what? Me too. Ugh. Date complete. Oh, cool. Whoa! Look at all his daddy points! Thank you for the lovely evening. Whoa! We got a B! Holy macaroni! While well, I'm doing my afternoon work jumbles, I hear the mail truck pull through the cul-de-sac. I wonder if we got any coupons today. The nice mail person slides a couple letters in a large yellow envelope through the slot and takes a couple of tries to get them in. Hey, my coupons. I take a closer look at the large envelope. Hmm. A light knock on- I lightly knock on Amanda's door. She probably has headphones on. Amanda? She yells at the door. What? <laughs> I have something for you. I've got a present right now. Can you come back later? Okay, just thought you wanted this big old envelope from HIA. Immediately, Amanda pushes her door open. Horn Institute for the Arts. I mean, if you're busy, I can come back. Father, please. <laughs> I hand her the envelope, which she tears open with her teeth. That's probably bad for her teeth. She doesn't seem to hear me and spits out a piece of the envelope. She pulls out the letter and folds it. And? The suspense is killing me. This is her dream school. Amanda's face is unreadable. I can't believe this. Oh, honey, it's okay if you didn't. I got in! <gasps> Yay! Amanda! Oh! I got in! I'm in and touch the letter side and gives me a big hug. Oh, yay, congrats, sweetie, that's amazing. I'm so proud of you. She pulls away and looks at the letter again. Oh my god, I really can't believe I got in. Well, of course you got in. You're a great student, you nailed that interview, and your photography is incredible. Uh. Wait, Dad, uh. I know this one's really expensive and it's so far away. I think for a moment. HIA was one of the more expensive schools that Amanda applied to, but I don't... But I know she's had her heart set on it for the longest time. It'll be tough, but we're gonna make it work. Mm. Really? Of course! Amanda hugs me again. Yes. Thanks, Dad. Okay, sweetie, we're celebrating tonight. Dinner. Your choice. Whatever you want. Yeah. What? Wherever? Whoa! Look at this place. Amanda and I walk along the, the bayside, side, tearing into our foil wrapped burritos from a nearby food truck. You could have chosen anywhere in Maple Bay. Cost was not a determining factor. Please, Dad. You know I'm a simple gal. Just give me a burrito and with a view. I can't say I'm mad. Amanda and I sit on a patch of grass and watch ships sail lazily through the bay. And the dorms are right near a bunch of cafes and there are all these galleries nearby and there's a discount if you bring your student ID and Amanda slow down you're gonna choke on your burrito <laughs> I know I'm just excited did I mention that students get their own studio space once they're seniors and we get the professional photo editing software for free it's nice to see Amanda so enthusiastic about HIA but I wish she wouldn't do it between bites of her burrito I thought I taught her to chew when with her mouth closed <laughs> 
I wonder who my roommate's gonna be. You you take a survey online and they match you with someone with a similar major and interest. I bet we're gonna be best friends. Craig and I were. I, a good roommate can be a lifelong friend. But don't even get me started on bad roommates. <laughs> oh no. I'm just kidding. We didn't have a bad roommate. Our only other roommate was a puppy that Craig brought home one night. We spent a semester fabricating a story about our new foreign exchange student who had a really bad cough and sounded exactly like a dog spark. <laughs> Carl ruled. Hey. Oh, they let you have animals in the dorms if you got get a note saying you need one. I bet I could forge it. I could forge one. I think I've got a rab. I, <laughs> I think I'd get a rabbit, or maybe a snake, or maybe both. Would the snake eat a rabbit, though? I'm pretty sure it would. Oh boy, I think they'll leave that up to you. <laughs> She's so excited. I don't want to disappoint her, but I need to be real for a second. So, you know I had that talk with Mr. Vega. Mm. He didn't tell you about the dumpster fire, did he? What? <laughs> what? Mm. No. I don't want to put a damper on the good news, but I need to knock it out of the park these day last few months of school, okay? If you really want to go to Horns, we need to we need that scholarship money. I know you can do it. Okay. I promise I'll try harder. I pat her on the back. I think you can handle 14 hour drive to come home from the holidays. There's gonna be some treacherous ice roads to cross. And don't even get me started on the paranormal occurrences. <laughs> well, it'll be worth it if I get to see you. My eyes immediately well up with tears. Hmm. Oh, Dad, don't cry. Sorry, I'm just very, very proud of you. You're all going up, Dad. You're going such a good person. I know if you don't want to do it to me. Dad, stop. You're going to make me cry, too. It's too late, honey. It's happening. <laughs> Dad, I can't get tears in my burrito. It's going to make it taste sad. I pull Amanda in for a hug and kiss her on her forehead. Love you, kiddo. Uh. Love you too, Pops. Welcome. Oh my this. god, that was amazing! I'm so happy! Oh my goodness! Okay, this is gonna be a longer episode, so we're gonna choose one more dad. And we're gonna do my method again. We're gonna freaking randomize. Are you ready? Here we go. Brian! My buddy! My pal! My big, bold ginger! I don't know what I'm saying. Let's message him. I'm actually really excited for Brian. He was one of my favorites before the game even come in, came out. Man, I don't know how do I feel about hanging out with Brian more. It seem, but it seems like Daisy and Amanda got along really well. Maybe I should just bite the bullet and hang out with Brian more for the sake of the kids. What do you mean for the sake of the kids? I thought Brian was a pretty cool dude. He brags a lot, but he's a cool dude. I cracked my knuckles. I was trying to get some knuckle cracking for you guys for that ASMR kind of feel, but it didn't work. <laughs> All right, hey Brian, Gra great grabbing burgers with you at the cookout yesterday. We should get the kids together and hang out soon. I wait a couple minutes until a ding comes from my computer and a message pops up on the screen. It's Brian. Let's see what he has to say. Oh God. Okay. Please. Why does everyone write such long messages? Hey, hey, man! Oh, and he always loves a good bird with a buddy. We should definitely hang out. What do you think about mini golf? We could bring the girls out and have ourselves a little friendly competition. Rock on! Brian, he signed his name. That's cute. Friendly competition? This is perfect. I know Amanda and I will crush Brian in mini golf. I've been taking her to mini golf courses since she was a little kid, and I'm proud to say that she's almost better than, at it than I am. I am the golf with friends master. Dab on them haters. <laughs> Almost. I type back. That sounds great, man. Name the time and place and we'll be there. Look at me texting back. Hey, Amanda. Huh. Hey, would you be up for some mini golf with Brian and Daisy? I'm a little out of practice and I know my backswing leaves something to be desired, but I think I could keep it in the negatives. Perfect. Come on, kiddo. Let's do this. Let's do this! Okay, you ready for this? Hey. Arr, matey! I'm ready as I'll ever be. Why are you talking like that? Hmm. Because this mini golf course is a pirate themed. I just now realized that we're indeed standing on top of a 
giant pirate ship in the middle of a putt-putt course. Oh! Come on, pirate dad! What you talk like a pirate with me? Arr, ahoy! Um, scurvy? Uh, avast ye! I'll make Brian and Daisy walk the plank if my superior golfing abilities, I mean, uh, the balloon! <laughs> Come on, Dad, you told me that this was just going to be some friendly competition. Friendly competition is Dad code for actual competition. I need to prepare my body, mind, and soul to defeat Brian on the field of glorious battle. Hmm? It's just mini-golf. Just mini-golf? Is it? It's so much more than that. I kneeled down and placed a hand on Amanda's shoulder. I just want you to know that there's no pressure. It's not a big deal. Don't worry about it too much, but we have to beat Brian at mini golf. <laughs> there's no pressure, but there's lots of pressure, okay? <laughs> Whatever happened to just having fun? Oh, we will have fun. When we beat them! Hmm. Amanda gives me a side eye, but before I can side eye her back, I spot Brian and Daisy. Ahoy there, Macy's! Hmm. Ahoy! Brian walks up with Daisy in tow. It looks like they really rented us some golf clothes for our, for our mini golf excursion. Total power move. Why didn't I think of that? Yeah. All right, first mate. I hear there's buried treasure in these waters. You gonna help me plunder it? Oh, Amanda. I don't think this is a real pirate ship. I think it's just to play putt putt on. Ugh. <sighs> Amanda gives Daisy a look. Okay. I mean. Aye aye, Captain! There you go. Daisy winks at Amanda. Oh. oh, look at those two. They're two peas in a pod. So you excited to get some mini golf in? Oh, you know it! You a gambling man? Oh no. I know when to hold them. Depends on what's on the table. Do I get you if I win? Do I get you if I win? <laughs> Amanda puts her hands over Daisy's ears. <laughs> Gross! Ugh! <laughs> Brian blushes. He's clearly a little uncomfortable. <laughs> how about the loser buys drinks tonight? Alright, but how about we make it a bit more interesting? I'm listening. The loser has to mow the winner's lawn this weekend. Well, my yard's pretty big. Are you prepared to take that on? I think you should be a little more concerned with how you're gonna maneuver around my hedges. It's highly technical work, not for the faint of heart. I don't think I'll need to worry about that. I'm very good at mini golf, you know. Oh yeah? Hole in one every time. What I just said is not a true thing, but it already came out of my mouth, so I have to stand by it. I'm looking forward to seeing that happen. Brian and I eye each other up and down. May the best dad win. Brian and I shake hands and lock eyes. It's about to go down. Oh yeah, we about to go down at Funk Town. Oh boy. Oh no. <gasps> I did it! Oh my god! Okay, I didn't think that was gonna work. Oh crap. Frick. accomplished in life! What? Oh, well, that didn't work very well. Don't worry, I got this! <laughs> oh my god! This is really fun! Oh! Frick! <gasps> go in, go in, go in, go go! Yeah! Frickin' nailed it! Oh! Th Frick! Crap. You lost your ball. You lost your ball. Oh, oh, what? Wait. Amanda pulls me aside while Brian and Daisy start walking to the next uh -huh. hole. Hey, you have a good time you having a good time? I'm having a great time. I'm having a fantastic time destroying Brian underfoot. Mm -hmm. I just asked because your eye is twitching. My eye is not twitching. Your eye is twitching. I feel my left eye twitch. Amanda raises her eyebrows. Uh -huh. We're out here to have fun, remember? It's just a game. You're right. It is just a game. 
A game with extremely high stakes. A game we're currently winning. Dad. Please, Amanda, please nail this next hole for me. We need to keep the streak going. If it's really that important to you, sure. Amanda walks over and tees up for a particularly hard windmill hole. Gripping her club, she winds up and launches the ball into the parking lot. She looks me right in the eye and does an exaggerated shrug. Amanda, you little turd. Oops. I disagree with her actions, but I appreciate her active youth defiance. She walks over and pats me on the back. That was for your own good. Amanda, I don't want to mow his lawn! Love you, kiddo. Arr, matey! I don't think I got it in. I tried to maintain an air of professionalism because there are children present, but I can feel the crushing weight of the four dads before me casting a disappointed look upon my broken frame. I have failed you, fathers, and for that I am sorry. Man, that was some good shooting there, Star. I fought valiant, and my only regret was being bested. I have lost, I have lost, lost that putt, putt. Mini golf is beneath me. I have lost, lost that my putt, putt. I am sorry, sorry. Amanda groans. Arr, right. Daisy, did you have a good time? Yo ho ho, I did. <laughs> we haven't even found the buried treasure yet. I think we would need to apply for a permit to dig around here. I can take Daisy home so we can ha get the city paperwork started for digging. You two go enjoy your night. Sounds like a plan. Star, are you cool with that? Sure. Just don't get yourselves into too much trouble. Can do. I'll make sure we get into a perfectly reasonable amount of trouble. Ah, that's my daughter. That's my girl. A man in days to skip away yelling about buried treasure. Bless that kid's tiny rebellious heart. Well, I guess we should hit the bar now. There's actually a tiki bar attached to this place. How about that? That sounds like a plan. Let's go, Brian. Guess I'm spending more time with Brian, which I'm not jazzed about, considering I just completely blew it on the putt-putt course. Okay, Dad, you can do this. Just gotta drown my sorrows in some s tropical loser drink and get out of here. Why am I so eager to get away from Brian? I like Brian. I think he's a cool dude. Brian and I walk into the freaky tiki. A kiss she- a kiss fit to be sweet. Yes. Island-themed bar. Palm trees adorn the walls, and several fake parrots are strewn about. Ukulele music plays softly in the background. Brian and I approach the bamboo bar. Right. Two pineapple of hostility, please. The bartender wipes us up to or whips. <laughs> the bartender whips us up two rum drinks inside the hollowed of pineapples. He sets on fire, and we have to blow them out before we can drink them. Usually I just like to, I don't know, drink my drinks? If you don't want yours, I'll take it. And best me again? I think not! <laughs> I take a sip of my hi pineapple hus of hostility. Sorrow tastes fruity. My lawn care needs are very particular. I hope you're up for the challenge. Oh, don't worry. I'll bring my own salt to promote health grown in a su sustainable environment. Oh, come on now, Star. I'm just having a little fun with you. I grumble and sip more of my fruity sorrow drink. Fine, fine. You got me on this one. While I sip more of my drink, I notice a TV in the corner. Hey, Extreme Makeover. Deck Edition is on. I love this show. Always made me want to want to own my own... Uh, always wanted to make me own a deck, which I know is your favorite kind of date, is building a deck together. Yo, dick bu deck building. Deck building. <laughs> Ugh, I hate the show. What? But you. But. Why? It's so clearly fake. Well, yeah, it's reality TV. Who cares? I care. I'm an, I'm a generally a, a general contractor. I work with decks all the time. There's no way they're renovating those decks in a matter of two days. It's impossible. That's a three-week job minimum. 
so you want them to cover those three weeks extensively in every episode? It, can, it can't be that interesting to watch a bunch of dudes slave over a deck for that long. Nobody can watch that. <laughs> I don't like any of those home improvement shows. I want to watch stuff that's real. Like Long Haul Paranormal Ice Road Ghost Truckers? I have terrible news for you, Star. No. No. Not them, too. That's the awful truth. Not the ghosts, though. Those are real. Oh, not the ghosts, though. Those are real. I can't read. Trucks just don't have emergency escape buttons. I've been lied to for so long. We both chuck and sip at our, on our ap pineapples. So wait, you're a general contractor? Sure am. What happened to my voice? <coughs> sure am. I actually helped plan the cul-de-sac we live in. Wow, nice work. Yeah, <laughs> kind of took after the footsteps of my old man. He was a general contractor too? The best. He practically built half of this town with his bare hands. It's weird how you spend your whole life trying to not become your father. Then you wake up one day and there you are. <laughs> but I get to work with my hands and it pays more than enough to take care of my daughter. So it's an absolutely dream job for me, for me at least. Hmm. Well, that's impressive. Building stuff has always been my weak point as a dad, and I've become okay with that until now. Now I must defeat him. I do have that patio furniture that I haven't put together still sitting in the garage. Okay, okay. Maybe I should cool it with the dad competition. Gotta keep it light. I know. Why do I always, like, gotta be so competitive? Uh, tell one of your classic jokes, ask about his daughter, stare him down unblinkingly. Unblinking. Hmm. I gotta hit him up with the jokes. My jokes are my best quality. So, a three-legged dog walks into a bar. Uh-huh. And he goes up to the bartender and says, I'm looking for the man who shot my leg. Ah. Is that how it goes? Nope, but I refuse to admit it. Uh... Yes, it's one of those anti-jokes. It's very avant-garde, you know? Oh, so it was supposed to not be funny? Ugh, fuck. Sure. I <laughs> take a long sip of my drink. No! My jokes! See, we can keep things friendly here. This is a perfectly pleasant... I This is perfectly pleasant. I could do this all night. Because I feel an in it need to impress Brian and prove I'm better than him, obviously. That's the only reason, I think. Let's keep it moving. Uh, ask about his dog, complain about kids these days, compliment his beard. Ooh. I gotta compliment the beard. Have you seen the beard on this man? Beautiful! Your beard- oh god, the dicks. <laughs> Your beard is nice. It looks very healthy. Thanks, I grew it myself. Uh, dad jokes! Ay! <laughs> hey, you're not allowed to, to j dad joke another dad. That's in the dad handbook. You can't do that. Is this how our daughters feel all the time? I'm upset. Hi, upset. I'm dad. No! I've been dad joked again! No! <laughs> God, I know my character. No! I mean, you walked right into that one. That's Dad Joke 101. Okay, yeah, 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 you got me. Listen, buddy, I took Dad Joke 101 years ago. I'm in the 400 level classes and well on my way to the degree of infart humor. Wow, Amanda must be so proud. She is not. <laughs> I look around the room and take in all the kits, kits, she, I don't know how to say that word, decor, looking for something else for a comment on. There's a gigantic fish hanging above Brian and I gesture to it. Where's the fish? I don't see the fish. Cool fish! Oh, this fish. It's definitely fake. Really? Ah. Everything in here is fake. That palm tree over there is just a ficus with plastic coconuts glued to it. I look over. He's right! Oh my god! <laughs> but I'm almost caught something like that fish once. Mine was bigger though. Of course it was. <laughs> I keep saying lines before they even come up. Of course it was. Oh really? 
Yep, I went on a trip to Hawaii maybe a decade ago. We were out on the sea for three days, catching fish, drinking beer, you know, guy stuff. We had a hot plate on the boat so we could sear the fish right after we caught it. Throw a little bit of salt, lemon on there. Oh man, that's some of the best food I've ever had. That actually sounds amazing. <laughs> well, it was the last day. Everyone had gone to bed already, but I was out there watching the stars. <gasps> stars! I'm Star! <laughs> had my line out too. Then all of a sudden, it just starts running. <laughs> so I jump on the reel before it gets ripped off the rod rack and start fighting with the damn thing. I'm out there for maybe an hour. Can't call out to my shipmates. It's just man against nature. Finally, I'm starting to tucker the guy out. I get him up onto the surface and finally get a sight of it. The biggest marlin I've ever seen. Hemingway, Eskew, I get it onto the boat single-handedly. <laughs> and you know what happens next? What happens next? The damn thing smacks me in the face with his tail knocks me out. I wake up the next morning on the deck, the fish gone. Never felt dumber. So it got away? I think there's another version of me that would have spent the rest of my life trying to catch that fish, Captain Ahab style. I'm sure Daisy would be supportive. Ah, ah man, fishing is the life. Having got gone enough lately. You go fishing? Actually, I have a confession to make. Wait, what am I doing? Why am I having this inexplicable uh, uh, urge to be vulnerable with him? I can't tell him that I'm terrible at fishing. No! I lean in close. I am amazing at fishing. I'm, I'm the best at fishing. No one can outfish me. What am I doing? Oh no! Uh. Uh. I'm just gonna go with I'm amazing because I want to be I'm the best because he's gonna know I'm not the best. I'm amazing at fishing. I'm simply the best out there. Okay, since you're such a pro, I'm taking you fishing. Do you want to go fishing? Oh no! Wait, don't answer that. Yes, you do. We're going fishing. SHIT! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, uh, I don't know. Come on, it'll, it'll be a blast. I know the perfect little fishing spot. I'll bring some beers. We can just sit back, relax, and reel in some trout. We'll bring the kids with us. Come on. You know you want to. I sigh. I think I've been cornered. Yeah, yeah, okay. Brian gives me an exuberant high five. Uh. Yes, maybe we'll see who can catch the most fish so I can get you mowing my lawn. You can try to beat me, but they don't call me star good at catching fish falling for nothing. That's what they call me. That's what they do. Yes, they do. I'm spinning a web of lies that I fear will one day consume me. Sounds like it'll be a scrap. Brian and I finish our drinks and head outside. Till next time. This is a great opportunity for friendship. I'm real excited. Kiss my bass, Brian. <laughs> I like the first one. This is a great opportunity for a friendship. Oh god, the dicks! <laughs> and also for catching more fish than Brian. You're krilling me with these puns, Star. Ah, the puns! Mull it over. You'll come around to the fish related dad jokes in no time. Brian extends his hand and gives me a friendly but firm handshake. I see that competitive fire in his eyes. This is gonna become a whole thing, isn't it? Hmm. Once Brian takes over her babysitting duties, Amanda walks home with me. She immediately pops down on the couch and flips on the TV. So, how is your your hanging your hang with Brian? It was okay. Oh yeah, he seems like a neat dude. I think I think so. I don't know. The guy loves a, a good competition. But then again, apparently so do I. What did you do? You and Daisy end up doing? Yeah. Oh, we hunted for treasure for a bit, but Daisy was really adamant about not digging without a permit. So we just watched some documentary about theor theoretical physics. I put her to bed and then sat down, sat around eating Brian's food. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> that standard babysitting protocol, I believe. I really like hanging out with Daisy. She's super mature for her age. Yeah, Brian says she has a hard time relating to other kids. She kind of reminds me of you at her age. Although she doesn't bite people as you did. As much as you did. <laughs> I can't believe I'm finally the cool older kid. Feels good. You gonna hang out with Brian again? That's the thing. He wants to go fishing with me. Hey. 
Oh! I told him I was an amazing fisherman. <laughs> you hate fishing. I know. I'm kind of panicking. Hmm. I'm sure it'll be fine. All you have to do is wake up at the crack of dawn and sit silently in a boat on a lake for hours on end with no promise of a tangible reward. Your only competition being the fear and doubt you harbor deep with your, within your heart. Fishing's fun. You remind yourself as the world darkens around you and you wonder if it's really you staring back at yourself in the lake's reflection or simply just the abyss. Yeah, laugh it up, Amanda. You're coming with us. <laughs> It is my constitutional right to outright refuse this order. Daisy's coming too. Well, hmm. I bet I could convince Brian to bring his dog. Fine. So, I'm in. Alright, I'm Bush. Gonna call it a night. Don't stay up too late, okay? You got it, Pops. Think complete! Woo! Oh my god! So many daddy points! <gasps> have done it better myself. All right, we got an A. Also, I I, I found out that Barry uh, uh, voices Brian, so that's cool. I love Barry. <laughs> Welcome. You got dads. Oh, we got the dads. We got all the dads. But you know what? We're gonna end that here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm really loving this game. The dates are cool. The mini games are awesome. Uh, they're a little difficult. I wasn't able to like figure out the gargoyle with Damien and mini golfing wasn't that bad. I'm just really impatient, so I kept clicking too soon. But anyways, I'm really excited to see what the future holds. We still got Craig, Matt, Hugo, Joseph, and Robert to still date. So I'm thinking we're gonna do maybe two per episode because that seems to be about a good like hour long video. So we'll see. We'll see. Anyways. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. And don't forget to click subscribe. Become a shining scar. Scar? Shining star. There we go. And until next time, shine bright. Okay, bye. <laughs>